um, I don't know whether you'll answer this question, but I will ask you that who uh, asked you? Was it the Prime Minister? And uh, two, uh, the, what, what was the first time that you met Mr. Modi? And what did you? What were your first takeaway of that meeting? Uh, the uh, who asked me, meaning who asked me to join, to join the, cabinet? the government? Yes, yeah. the Prime Minister asked the Prime me. Minister. Okay. Uh, when did I meet Mr. Modi first? I met him in 2011, in November, uh, in Beijing. Uh, I never met him before. Oh, he was chief minister then? He was chief minister then. then. Okay. He had come on a visit. Hmm. Uh, and uh, that's how our acquaintance uh, started. Uh, uh, I assume in the light of later events, I must have made a good impression. Hmm. I can tell you, he may, frankly, he made a very big impression on me because... I, you know, by by 2011, I had already uh, done. Uh, uh, I mean, I had done what? Uh, Two uh, ambassadorial uh, postings already. No, right? this was my third. Third one. Third. Yeah. And I'd seen. So Singapore you know, and Czech. Czech. So I'd seen, you know, people come and go, achievements. I had never met someone better prepared, better, uh, more serious, uh, and also more. I found him very interesting. You know, I, I give you a... And this is a person, by the way, we are meeting here for the first time. Hmm. So uh, he, we go through this business briefing, you know, what he should say, who he's meeting, etc. Then he said that, I want to talk a briefing. Which was a bit of a surprise. No chief minister had done that. And of course, he told me, I mentioned it in one piece I've written, saying, look, it's very important for me that we, I'm abroad. I may be from a different party, but I shouldn't say or do anything which is different, you know, at that too in a country like China. So uh, it should, uh, it's very, you know, I want you to brief me mm. on on key issues. And we were having our problems at that time. Even at that time, there was a listing problem. Uh, there was staple visas problem. They were not dealing with our northern command. There were, you know, all these Arunachal. There was some Gujarati diamond. Uh, yes, that, uh, there was a bunch of uh, Gujarati uh, Surat uh, diamond diamonds, traders uh, who had also been detained. He mm. brought that up as yeah. well. The uh, after I uh, did, you know, was mm. done with him, and we went for the meetings, and then we were riding in the same car. So he said, you know, I have this habit. Uh, he said, my har meeting ke baad mein debrief leta hu. Or agar apko kahi kuch lagta hai ki things are not okay, aap ishara kari. Okay, so I I remember this because you know for me there is a certain manner of working which he has you know he is all the time like gauging, uh, sensing, very very uh, sensitive to 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 this, very keen that he should not make a mistake that he should convey things accurately that the policy that the nuances are captured. This was my first. Uh, experience uh, mm. of him. After that, I didn't see him till he became prime minister. Okay, is it the same now? Before he travels, after he travels, when you travel, is it the same kind of thing? Foreign policy matters. You talk to each other. Where he asks questions, you answer. You ask questions, he answers. Is that how it works? It's no. You, uh, it is and it isn't. I mean. Uh, uh, sort of uh, intrinsically it is the same but it's now on a totally different scale and leak sure so uh, now what happens is usually you know we would strategize before you know we spend uh, i mean usually i'd say even not at the beginning of the year but even in the previous year we start thinking you know what should we be doing where are we going who should we engage that kind of strategy session uh, when it comes to something specific, mm. you know, uh, uh, it would it would uh, uh, it would be like he would we would go through the details of where we are going, mm. you know, what are the objectives, who are we meeting, what are their objectives. So mm. there's a there's a kind of uh, uh, I would say uh, strategizing and a uh, and a, a game planning which goes uh, well ahead. And then it's repeatedly visited, reviewed. Uh, so, uh, so sometimes uh, even in the midst of meetings, you would see us, you know, one of us lean across uh, and say something to him or him doing the same. 
or if there's a break in a meeting you know we would have a quick confabulation i mean you you could i mean since a and i films lot of yeah. this you would often see you know there's a quick huddle yeah. uh, where you quickly saying something we are updating or he's sharing hmm. uh he's you know um uh we can't hear though because there's no, no fortunate <laughs> uh, th- thank god you can't hear because yeah. you know that would kind of destroy our uh, uh strategizing we uh, should get somebody to mm, see the lip syncing and see yeah. what's happening there but uh, but uh, the he's very he's a very discussive person if you know what okay. i mean hmm. uh, and he has views uh, but he's very open to you know opinion agreement disagreement improvement mitigation it's it's very it's very so yeah. how do i say you know yeah. interactive a, lots of people say that he's he's a very ideas kind of a man in fact uh, you know uh, uh, some of the questions were uh, on youtube with that and uh, my team has made a, uh, a video which i'm going to show I'm, it to you i'm part of the east i'm part of the south i'm part of the west i'm universal <laughs> i'm india someone to say i'm doing this because it is for counter terrorism you know you're not fooling anybody by saying these things mr soros is a uh old rich opinionated person if i could only stop at old rich and opinionated i would put it away but he is old rich opinionated and dangerous you know somewhere europe has to grow out of the mindset that europe's problems are the world's problems but the world's problems are not europe's problems our total purchases for the month would be less than what europe does in an afternoon i don't think we're sitting on the fence just because i don't agree with you uh, doesn't make me sitting on the fence it means i'm sitting on my ground i'm entitled to have my own side i'm entitled to weigh my own interests make my own choices you're asking the wrong minister when you say how long will we do this because it is the ministers of pakistan who will tell you how long pakistan intends to practice terrorism if you have snakes in your backyard you can't expect them to bite only your neighbors eventually they will bite the people who keep them in the backyard if i were to take europe collectively which has been singularly silent on many things which were happening for example in asia you could ask why would anybody in asia trust europe on anything at all if you are asking me i would say yes 2014 was a watershed moment yes things have changed better after 2014 yes our foreign policy has become more dynamic more effective more prominent after 2014 mr modi was very famous and uh, very demanding so how do you deal with that i'm so glad you chose that understated word demanding uh, so uh, yes i i think the prime minister is demanding i think is rightly demanding because it's time that india had a demanding person as prime minister it's tough to work for a demanding boss but at the end of the day you actually if you feel that's the kind of person the country needs i think you are willing to do whatever you have to do at that time two democracies will end it differently and if you can prove that concept here then i think is probably the best way to sell democracy don't worry senator one democracy will settle it and you know which one Mm-hmm. Okay. Lindsay Graham. <laughs> yeah. So this All right. <laughs> so this this is what we uh, you know my team got this together. Okay. And uh the same thing about being a demanding prime minister. They one is heard about how you have 11 pm meetings and 